life begin on planet Earth, and are we alone in the universe? Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson takes on big questions like these in a new book, Cosmic Queries, Star Talk's guide to who we are, how we got here, and where we're going. It's based in part on his popular Star Talk series, where fans ask big questions to the big astrophysicist. In that spirit, we asked our viewers for their own cosmic queries, and Tyson answered them at his home base, the Ross Center for Earth and Space at the American Museum of Natural History right here in New York City. Hello, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, and let's get straight to your cosmic queries. Bobby asks, why does the moon have seemingly more craters than we have here on Earth? That's an excellent question. So it's not just that it seemingly has more craters, it does have more craters. So what's really happening here is we're getting hit just as often as the moon, except we have an atmosphere to protect us. Thompson asks, what would happen to Earth if the sun were to disappear for five seconds? You wouldn't know about it for eight minutes and 20 seconds, because that's how long it takes the light from the sun to reach us. The whole world would plunge into darkness and we would fly off at a tangent into interstellar space and make a good science fiction story to explore that, but you'd have to come up with a reason why the sun would disappear for five seconds. The same. This is a UFO, unidentified flying object. One viewer from Cliffwood Beach, New Jersey writes, when humans visit other planets, are we considered the aliens to that planet? Yes. Could the resident beings be hiding in fear of us? That's possible, but Generally, before we land on another planet, we send reconnaissance missions. We send missions that orbit the planet, take photographs, repeated photographs, so that we can choose where we want to land. And if there were beings on that planet walking around, and then they see us coming ready to land, we would have caught them doing their thing. And so I'm pretty sure they're not hiding from us in fear. But only pretty sure Neil deGrasse Tyson joins us now to answer <laughs> our cosmic questions. Neil, good morning to you. Uh, let's stick with the big one, the yeah. biggest of all, I think. Um, are we alone in the universe? Yeah, well, we don't know for sure. But if you ask any informed person who knows, for example, the age of the universe, what we're chemically made of, life on Earth is chemically made of, how quickly life got underway on Earth, this, uh, how many exoplanets are now in the catalogs, you would be uh, inexcusably egocentric to suggest otherwise. So, yeah, yeah, so, uh, we could be, uh, maybe we're not alone with other microbes, but possibly other intelligence well, as well. So that, that's the follow-up question, right? If no, we are not alone in the universe, there are other beings out there what does life look like out there? How do you define life? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I can tell you this. Hollywood does a bad job at it, all right? All the life forms that they tend to show, they have two arms, two legs, eyes, nose, mouth, head, and most life on Earth doesn't have that. So and that's uh, life uh, with that, where we have DNA in common. So uh, I don't think they do a good job imagining life elsewhere. The Blob was pretty good, 1958 Steve McQueen film. That didn't have a vertebrate, it was an invertebrate thing that, 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 that didn't have anything you would identify as humanoid. And plus, I guess there was no actor inside of it. <laughs> so then the question becomes, where is everybody? Which I think is a fascinating question. If we think life is out there, beings of some kind, we don't know what they look like, we don't know anything about it. Uh, where are they? How come we haven't heard from them? Are we a zoo here? Are we like their experiments? Yeah, so there, there are a lot of suggestions for that. It, one is they have visited and they sort of were intrigued by us and we are in a zoo that they have collected. That's one, <laughs> one hypothesis. An, another one, I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's a hypothesis. Uh, another one, I, my preference is that they have visited but have not hung around because they went back to their home planet and reported that there was no sign of intelligent life on Earth. Yeah. Hey, Neil, were you glued to your TV watching Perseverance land on, the rover land on Mars? Is it something you would actually like oh, to yeah. do one day? Uh, oh, <laughs> only after they test the human rockets that go yes. first. Yes. You know, I, I joke about this. If Elon is going to send a rocket and he wants to put me on it, I say, Elon, send your mother first, bring her back safely, then I can go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would totally take a trip. Totally. It's yeah. only a nine-month trip. You give me a good, good Netflix account and a few books, I'm good.
You know, I, what I think is so interesting about your book, number one, it's beautifully done. I love the illustrations. I love your tweets. I think it's great whether you're interested in science or not interested in science. And one of the things that struck out to me, you said some of my best friends, actually all of my best friends are made up of chemicals. I never thought of it like that. Of course it's true, <laughs> of course it's true. But I know you see science in everything. I remember when you're in the green room telling us about how, when you go to the beach, the lessons you give your children just sitting there watching at the waves. They go, Dad, we just want to look at the waves. But you're, you're dictating all these sorts of things. Do you see science in everything? And why do you love it so? Yeah, I see science in everything because science basically is in everything. Yeah. And, and it's the source of, it's the, it's the pathway to learn what's going on in fulfillment of your curiosity that got you there. So with my kids at the beach, I wouldn't give them answers. I would toss them questions. You know, why is the water receding? Yeah. Why yeah. is it coming back? Well, where does the water go when it goes through the sand? How many sand grains are there in a pocket, in a, in a fistful of Can sand? Can I be your child? So, I want to I I answer that. I know, I was fascinated by that. Is, he's, our, he's your personal <laughs> astrophysicist. Can we go to the, we go to the beach together? Yeah. Science is in everything, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, dad jokes are too, and those yes. are in the book as well. So come for the science, dad stay jokes. for the dad jokes. Uh, we appreciate you coming on this point. Thank you very much. Cosmic Queries, Star Talk's guide to who we are, how we got here, and where we're going goes on sale tomorrow. <laughs>